Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. I've been watching an interesting dis documentary on the Discovery Channel called The Weed Wars. And uh, it's basically been a uh, video, uh, daily video account of the uh, Oakland's Harborside Health Center, uh, which, is one of the, which is the largest uh, retail marijuana store in the country. They sell medical cannabis to uh, at least 95,000 patients out there and all. And uh, the one documentary that I watched, the first part of, uh, they were being hit with this uh, tax from the uh, local council and they were f being forced to be uh, paid in advance, in almost a year in advance when it was due. And uh, later in the program they also showed where the Internal Revenue Service was treating them like a cartel and telling them that certain, uh, certain of their expenditures that they tried to deduce on their taxes and all were not de deductible items because they were treating them like a drug cartel in which their vehicles and certain things, assets and stuff, they couldn't declare those you know, off their taxes and stuff. Now they're a nonprofit organization. They work uh, as a nonprofit business there in California. And uh, this is one of the problems of, that I foresaw back when they had first talked about doing medical marijuana in California. Uh, there are many, many problems with medical marijuana, but this, this issue of the government, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, the federal ban on cannabis is not going to stop the Drug Enforcement Agency from coming in on top of these pharmacies. And they've been, they've been hit before. And now they're going through, at them through the tax loop through the Internal Revenue Service and all, and treat them like a cartel. And basically they're trying to provide medical cannabis to some 95,000 patients, which is fine. I have no problem with anybody that finds medicinal help from cannabis. My problem with medical marijuana is that these type of issues that you're seeing right now, this regulatory thumb of the government pressing down like they're doing, this is why we need to have cannabis completely legal and turn it over to the free enterprise system. One of the things that the Internal Revenue Service, the reason that they are treating you, what's going on there at the various dispensaries like your cartels, is because the prices that are being charged for the cannabis are still at an illicit price range. This is as if that cannabis has been made legal, but we're going to keep the illegal price. The one reason that the price of cannabis is so high everywhere is because it's illegal. And once we make this a legal commodity and turn this over to the free enterprise system, the price is going to drop way below what these councils, the Oakland City Council, and all these tax revenues that they're basing on and all the money and stuff. These, these numbers are going to fall drastically off, at least in that regard as far as the cannabis. But one thing it will do when we make it legal is we'll open up the hemp industry. And this is where the true money is going to be made. This is where the tax revenues will be a thousandfold of what you'll ever get from the cannabis. Even if every person in the United States smoked an ounce of cannabis every day, we could grow that on a very small amount of land by comparison to what we grow food crops on. So you're only going to have a limited market for the amount of cannabis that can be grown. And people out there that can grow their own once it's made legal and all, that, that, will, that demand will even be less. There will be places like these dispensaries that they will have, certainly have an opportunity to, to work as a, a legitimate business in the free enterprise system and not be nonprofit. This, this is America. It's foolish for us to have to set up a nonprofit entity. It's basically what we did when they allowed medical marijuana. We bowed down to the powers that be. Yes, it did allow people who wanted to possess cannabis to use it for medicinal purposes and all, even though they had to go through a doctor to get a card and all of that to, to be able to, to possess it without being hassled by the cops and all that. It did do that for the, for the medical marijuana users and all, but it's not just about the people who want to use cannabis for medicinal purposes. It's an herb, and it certainly has many, many medicinal properties and all. And that, that is what makes it so nice. But it's not, it, medical marijuana is trying to turn it into like a pharmaceutical narcotic, something, make it look like it's something it isn't. It's not giving a clear, accurate picture of what the cannabis plant is and the cannabis flower tops that are smoked. This is a very safe herb. It's been used for thousands of years, it's never killed anyone, never harmed anyone. And 
what medical marijuana does, it makes it seem like that we have to have these regulations and all of this government control and all. We don't control alcohol and cigarettes to that level. All we do is put an age limit on them, and they do actually kill people. So if we, if we don't, we're not going to make people that drink alcohol or choose to go out and smoke a cigarette or those who choose pharmaceutical drugs from doctors, if they so be, it's their, it's their right, their choice. We don't regulate that in the sense like we do the cannabis and all. And if you're not going to make the people who want to go stop at the liquor store and pick up a six pack carry a card saying, hey, they're a booze drinker, you don't hear people saying, oh, he's, he's one that drinks beer. You know, like you'd hear somebody say, oh, he, he smokes cannabis, doesn't he? You know, I mean, it's just so absolutely insane. Cannabis has been a safe herb since the dawn of time that man discovered it and began using it. It's been used for thousands and thousands of years. We have these pharmaceutical companies like this GW Pharmaceuticals in the UK that's trying to patent over 300 different varieties of cannabis because they now are making a tincture called Sativex, which is really just a Nabixamol is what they are as a type of uh, pharmaceutical. But these are tinctures. These are just extracts from the cannabis flowers and all. And they're trying to patent 300 varieties of plants that they so-called cloned in their laboratories and all. And this is absolutely insane. Nobody has a right to, to patent a cannabis plant. All of the varieties that are known worldwide before all the crossing started, before people got into crossing different varieties of cannabis and all and coming up with all these exotic varieties that we have and all. All of these existed on the planet and they existed long before any of us ever made the first documentary about them, before the first letter of print ever went into print, everywhere. These things existed thousands of years ago and these different varieties were globally distributed around the world. And depending on what region they came from, it, it was the characteristics, it's no different than any other plants that are out there. This is just one of the examples that we've taken a plant in nature and we're going to bastardize it. Instead of embracing it and the scientific community embracing it to what this plant is and all of the textiles and stuff that this thing could generate and the medicinal properties. I mean, there are people out there that just want to sit back and smoke a joint. They should be allowed to. No different than the people who decide to kick back and have a beer or a martini or smoke a cigarette and all. They're not being hassled by the Drug Enforcement Agency, even though their drugs are dangerous and they do kill. But cannabis users shouldn't have to go through this scrutiny. And that was one of the problems with the, that I had with the medical marijuana, is that it tried to narcotize an herb, an herbaceous herb that's been around forever, and we knew that it was safe. We've been trying for 40-something years to get this, this plant legal because we knew it was safe. We knew that it wasn't dangerous. It certainly didn't have the effects that alcohol and the, and the debilitating effects that it produces over long-term use. Another thing about the cannabis users and stuff, the, the different medis the, the dispensaries and all, is cannabis is one of those types of herbs. Yes, it will give you immediate relief from many, many symptoms that plague a lot of people, and they certainly should have the right to use them all. But it's the long-term usage of cannabis, the day-to-day. -day. It's like using herbs when you incorporate them in your diet and all. It's the long-term usage of that that builds up the benefits for you, builds up your immune system, builds up your mind's ability to think better than you think normally. And, and this, is, this is the problem that I have with all of the medical marijuana and all, is that we're trying to make something bad and, and disgusting out of something that is actually a very beneficial plant, a very beneficial herb that was safe enough for children to be using back when it was legal in this country. Doctors prescribed it to children in dosages way more than anybody smokes and takes in today. But, we didn't learn anything from the prohibition during the early times of this year when we tried to do this with alcohol. And cannabis is no different. We certainly got to stop this because we can become independent as a nation from fuel just from this one plant alone. And the 50,000 products that it generates will generate more sales tax revenue than any cannabis we could ever sell for anybody wanting to use it for smoking, for recreation, relaxation, or for medicinal reasons. There's only a given amount of market that is going to be available to buy any cannabis produced. And if people are allowed to grow their own and all, this is going to even take away more than that number. So stop 
creating, if you don't want to be created, created like a cartel, let's turn this over to free enterprise. Let's make cannabis legal. It certainly should be with all the things that we have out there that are legal. This one certainly pales in so many ways to not being anything like these dangerous drugs like alcohol and cigarettes are and prescription drugs that we seem to think is okay to sell in every five and dime out there. Let's stop this. Let's turn this over to free enterprise. Let's open up the hemp industry. We'll create jobs in the process and we'll certainly take away the six to 10 million barrels of oil that we have to ship from our foreign adversaries in the Middle East. Let's do this, America. Cannabis should be legal. It's our constitutional right to smoke it. It's nobody else's business to tell an individual that they can or cannot use this herb. It's absolutely wrong. And long-term usage of it has not proved devastating or debilitating to anyone. And when you look at alcohol and cigarettes and the deaths that they cause and the debilitating diseases that they cause, why are we so concerned about having cannabis illegal? Let's stop all of the violence south of the border because it's all about the DEA and they're trying to enforce the cannabis laws. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's all a bunch of hype. They base all of these wars, these drug wars and all that. It's all based on a pack of lies and, and has been for a long time. And we're limiting the hemp industry in the process. We're, we're debilitating our own country as a result of it. Everybody out there smoking cannabis is not going to do the harm that is being done right now by the Drug Enforcement Agency and the law enforcement agencies out there that are trying to interdict cannabis. Let's stop this ridiculousness. It's time to make Mary Jane legal. It's time to make cannabis legal. It's a person's God-given right, and it's certainly much, much safer than all of the things we have that are legal out there. And this year, we, we have a chance in 2012 to elect a president that can make things happen, that can make things change and get this country on the right path, get this country more constitutionally minded. And I hope all of you are out there will support Ron Paul because he's the only candidate out there that's going, that has a plan to save America. The rest of them talk the same old rhetoric. Ron Paul has a specific plan and I hope you will be supporting him. And I thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.